If you've watched the other videos in this series I've been making about the Zettel Custom method, you'll know that I make use of what are called folder cards. In this video, I'm going to explain to you why you should stop using them. Kind of. First of all, let me address the question that I'm sure has been on the minds of every single one of my most loyal subscribers, which is at least three of you. And that question is this. You get punished by the YouTube algorithm if you don't publish videos on a regular basis, so where the crap have you been? I haven't posted a new video for a while because I hired some people to paint the inside of my house. As a result, for about two weeks, most of my possessions got pushed to the center of each room and wrapped up in sheets of plastic. Okay, let's talk about Zettelkost and stuff. As I said, this video is about why you should stop using what I call folder cards. Kind of. If you've watched the previous videos in this series, you'll know that I have said that when starting a Zettelkasten from scratch, it's a good idea to come up with a handful of main subject areas that you plan on focusing on in your Zettelkasten. I also recommended that you build out your subject areas into subcategories or branches and create folder cards for each of those. And I recommended that you build those out two or three levels deep. In this mind map replica of my own Zettelkasten, you can see that I have built out one of my subject areas three levels deep. Three levels beyond level one, that is. You can think of each of these levels as a column. The column furthest to the left is level one, the column to the right of that is level two, and so on. For levels two, three, and four of my race and racism branch, I have created folder cards. The next image I'm about to put on the screen shows you what these three folder cards look like in my old school Zettelkasten. Usually I write the titles and addresses for folder cards in pink so as to distinguish them from my idea cards, the titles and addresses of which are written in blue. In case you're wondering, the fact that I have two folder cards here that are in orange rather than pink kind of drives me crazy, but I'm on meds for that. As I said at the beginning of this video, I'm telling you to stop creating folder cards. When I say that though, I do not mean that you shouldn't have any folder cards in your Zettelkasten at all. Instead, I'm saying that after creating folder cards two or three levels deep, you should stop creating more. I say this for three reasons. First, if you create folder cards beyond the third or fourth level, you are most likely going to find yourself in the unfortunate position of agonizing over where to put new cards in your Zettelkasten. If you find yourself in this unfortunate position, it's probably because you are making the mistake of thinking that you have to find the supposedly one and only best place for each card you create. As I've said several times in previous videos, to the extent you make this mistake, you'll be trying to do with your Zettelkasten something the Zettelkasten method is not really about. The second reason you should stop creating folder cards beyond the third or fourth level is closely related to the first. If you have folder cards too many levels deep in your Zettelkasten, you are less likely to use your Zettelkasten for what the Zettelkasten method really is about, namely, developing lines of thinking. The third reason to stop creating folder cards beyond a certain point has to do with how to organize your idea cards. You should be relying primarily on the index section of your Zettelkasten to organize those. I haven't talked about the index section of a Zettelkasten yet. I'll say just a little bit about it here. If you want to get your index section started, grab a handful of cards, 26 of them if you're doing things in English, and on each one write a letter of the alphabet. Now let's say you have a sequence of idea cards fairly deep in your Zettelkasten that are focused on the issue of healthcare. If you want to be able to find that sequence of cards in the future, you should write down the word healthcare on the H card in your index, and then right next to that entry, you should put the address of the first card in that sequence. As I said, the index should become the primary way of organizing your idea cards. Whereas folder cards get you started with organizing idea cards before you create idea cards to place behind them, the index can be used to organize your idea cards after you have created several of them. But actually, if you want, you can have zero folder cards in your Zettelkasten. Yeah, zero. Niklas Luhmann didn't use folder cards, and you don't have to either. In fact, you can even get rid of the subject areas if you want. Like Scott Shepard, I believe that for those just getting started with the Zettelkasten method, creating a few subject areas can be very helpful. But you don't have to do that. As Bob Dotto argues in a video recently posted by Shepard, although Lumen had 11 main subject areas in his second Zettelkasten, he came up with those subject areas only after creating idea cards. Moreover, Dotto appears to argue, I'm not 100% certain this is his view, but he appears to argue that coming up with subject areas is, as he says, antithetical to the entire 
system. He adds that starting out this way could result in using your Zettelkasten in ways that you would do well to unlearn. Well, I'm not so sure that starting off with a handful of main subject areas is antithetical to the entire Zettelkasten method. Creating folder cards too many levels deep certainly is. Moreover, because so much of what I have learned from Dotto about the Zettelkasten method has proven to be valuable, in the coming weeks I plan on experimenting with using folder cards a lot less and perhaps not at all. At some point, I'll report back to you about how the experiment went. We're about done here. I just want to let you know what the next couple of videos I plan on making will be about. In the video before this one, I talked about where to put a new continuation card when it has a good enough relation to one of the cards that already exists in your Zettelkasten. In one of the upcoming videos, I'm going to show you where to put a new card when it doesn't have a good enough relation to an already existing card. I also plan on making a video about why I think using an old school Zettelkasten can be so effective when it comes to digesting the information we consume. And then one other video I hope to create will be about different approaches to creating Folgezettel, those sequences of notes I mentioned earlier. One of those approaches I call the outward in approach and the other the inward out approach. I know, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait. Yeah, hit subscribe and the like button while you're at it. I'm gonna sit here for 20 seconds while you do that. Seriously, it's like 15 seconds now. Have you done it yet? There's like four seconds left. All right, see you in the next video.